start, we've got uh, Spark Liang. Uh, Spark made a name for himself as one of Asia's most prominent wealth advisors, guiding traders and investors alike to understand the connections between changes in economics, market regimes, and sentiment. In this exclusive presentation, Spark assesses uh, where we are in the market cycle, how best to position portfolios in this dynamic, and exploring his views on the current investment landscape, Spark will demonstrate how these views are dynamic and how they can be applied to your, your personal situation and circumstance and your own tolerance for risk. And I think that's really important. So let Spark show you how he makes real world connections and connections and, and assesses and manages risk in his quest to consistently hold an edge in these uncertain markets. Let's give it up for Mr. Spark Liang. Hello, everyone. So why are you here today? To get some new idea on uh, what's your next trade, how to uh, protect your wealth in this uncertainty, and how to grow your wealth in this for the next coming years, right? Okay, so what I'll be sharing today is what asset is the best investment in this based on the market condition and the market cycle, and what are the risks in the current market, and if this or that happen, what should we do? And uh, a bit of introduction about myself. Anyone up here like watch my video before? Can you have a raise of hand? Nope. Or oh, only one. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I need to do an <laughs> introduction of myself. So my name is Spark. So I'm a, a personal finance YouTuber, which I've been sharing about personal finance for uh, for five years period. So me myself is uh, specialized in personal finance area. So today. My sharing will not be on much, much on the trading side, but more on the personal wealth side. So that's why when I when I share, I will share on the when I, when I'm talking about portfolio, I'm not talking about your portfolio, your trading portfolio, because your trading portfolio is just part of your wealth. So I will sharing on your more about your personal wealth perspective, and so uh, and for me, my. What I do is I will talk about the market economy and how this market economy is going to affect your wealth. Okay, let's start. Okay, and a uh, small disclaimer here. Uh, this presentation is for education purpose only. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so for me, I'm a guy that very straight to the point one. So like this is the thing that you are more concerned, right? What you all like? You know, more, most is that what is the best investment asset now based on the current market condition? So I can tell you directly, I give the answer straight. In this, the first minute, I already give the answer already. Then you can walk away already. Okay. <laughs> so, so this is called an uh, economy regime uh, diagram. So, based on this, this chart, you see, so uh, the best investment asset now is actually cash bond and gold and commodities but why why because to understand like why is this we must understand why is this so so to understand this chart we need to look at this so we need to understand this so where are we now actually we are now in a stagflation but so uh which means in a simple term is called the market is just over with overheat which a lot of cash, a lot of cash, so high inflation, but the business are not growing. So just very simple statistic. You see, we are having high inflation now and low GDP, negative GDP. So which we bring us to, we are here at, a, at, at this side, rising inflation and slow growth. So that's why it says cash, bond, spread, gold commodities is the best investment asset. But... Have you, ever, have you ever wonder why? Why cash? Why bond? Why go? Why commodity? So that's why here am I to explain to you why they are the best investment now. Okay. So you see, investment asset, these this are like, like very common, common investment asset uh, that, that, that you all commonly see now. Nah. Okay. In, see, investment asset in high inflation and low growth environment. So, you see, when I look at this, we are looking at the value term, ah, value, ah. Okay. You see, in a high inflation world, you see, uh, cash, the value of cash and bond actually go down. You see, in inflation, in, when inflation happen, like 
what happened to your cash? Your buying power actually go lower, right? So that's why cash, your, va- your, your cash value actually go down, you know, your, your, your buying power of your, your cash actually go down. But have you ever wonder, ever wonder why cash is still a good investment asset? You see, as you all know, right, cash, cash is going, value is going down, but why is it good? Okay. So the next thing is, okay, but, but I, 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 let's, let's, let's finish this chart first. Huh? Okay, you see, commodity and gold is going up because of very simple thing, inflation. Inflation, like commodities, are part of the necessities that we're using. That's why the increase. But equity go down. Because, uh, sorry, equity go down. Because of this high inflation, like pricing are going up. The cost of business, like in business-wise, their cost of goods sold are actually increased. So it's actually affect their margin a lot. Like for people like us, our salary didn't increase much, but the everything increased in price. So what we can buy is actually less. So in this high inflation and low growth stage, no matter how equity are, it's, the, the, the stock market, the business side is very affect a lot, a lot. So that's why equity going down. And real estate wise, it's going down, but it, in the stage now, because we don't, we don't buy real estate that we, when we buy real estate, right? We don't look it at like a very short term period. You buy today, you sell tomorrow. So that's why it's, it's, it's not something like this. So real estate now, like a lot of country, their real estate price is going down. But for some country like us, Singapore, Malaysia, it's still maintaining. Like, like in this stage, still didn't go that low so fast. But you see, uh, you look at this, uh, you cannot say, hey, now cash is no good. You go buy real estate now. We don't think, we don't, we don't think like this. Okay, okay. So, like, you see, you based on, look at the thing now. Actually, the, for the past one year, the best investment asset that you can invest is actually commodity and gold. You know, the best thing. But the problem is, now, we are, you, you, you and the, the chart here, you see, the, we are at this chart. We are at this chart. And if you look at this at the market cycle, right, we are almost at the end of it, AD. End, end of it, AD. You know why? The, the Federal Reserve, they are like putting a lot of energy, hard work in trying to lower down the inflate, lowering down the inflation. That's why, like, yes, inflation is going to make commodity, make gold, and now with the energy crisis, it's going to up. But, you know, like in trading, you always say, don't go against the trend. <laughs> like, don't go against the Federal Reserve. <laughs> so they are trying to push, they are, okay, okay, of course, like, as a trader, we always want our oh, commodity go up, what we buy go up. But don't go against the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve don't want this thing to go up again, you know. Don't trade against them. <laughs> so that's why, for me, cash, if you want to trade commodity, go, can, there's still upside, there's still upside, but this is not the big trend, you know, this is small trend, okay, 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 then, okay, so, this is the key of my presentation, what is the biggest risk and where are we heading now, so, this is something very important, so, take a, pay good attention, so, what is the biggest risk now, like what Chris says, quantitative tightening is the biggest, biggest, biggest risk now, I mean, it's very modern. So let me have a sl- slight introduction on what is quantitative tightening. Because I think this is the second time that we are going through this quantitative tightening in the whole life. <laughs> so in the whole bit, like, 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 only not much people experience this quantitative tightening. We always go quantitative easing. So you see, quantitative easing, quantitative tightening is the opposite of quantitative uh, tightening. Okay, so... You, you must imagine, uh, imagine this Federal Reserve, huh? it's like your rich neighbor. It's like a very, very rich neighbor. And he can print money in seven. So you see, when the Federal Reserve want to, uh, in, in the past 10, 20 years, he's keep printing money. How he print money? Huh? He, this is balance sheet, asset side. He increase his own liability. He go take that himself, take them from who? Don't know. This is a secret. <laughs> it's, it's, it's real, you know. You know, Federal Reserve 
she just increased the balance sheet. Because like in normal company, we need to take money from someone, right? Uh, Federal Reserve, she can just in, she can just take that himself from who? Don't know lah. <laughs> so she said, she came, the, the, that's the, the only one person that can do this. The only one in, in this room can do this is, is only Federal Reserve. That's why he's, he's the most... That's why everyone like US, <laughs> US dollar. Okay. So okay, he just increased. When he increased the liability, if you know accounting, increased left side, right side also increased. So that's why after he increased the liability, he got a lot of asset. He's rich. So if your neighbor is rich, what he will do? He will spend money. Lah. He will spend money to your... Then the, the, the whole village will have a lot of money flowing so the economy is getting better and better. And when he got a lot of money, then you want to borrow money from him. Okay or not? Okay, so wow, economy go smooth. That's why this, for the past 10 years, huh, economy, stock market, every market go up. Man. Why? Because the, our neighborhood is rich. But now, you see, the, the Federal Reserve, you see, in, inflation is high. Infl high inflation is no good for everyone. Huh? Even me, uh, no, no good for me. Uh, like my pocket is feeling, my wealth actually shrink down, you know. So this is no good for everyone. So to handle this, he must handle this, you know. So what he do? Quantitative tightening. You see, because like I said that the market in high inflation is because the market is too hot. So how to do? So he, he just cut off the debt and shrink down his asset. So now you have a poor neighbor. When you have a poor neighbor, what happened? Oh, yeah, previously you want to borrow money very easy. Now very hard. So why you do this, huh? You know, you know, Federal Reserve must do this, you know. You don't need to understand, huh? He must do this, huh? To you know, you know the problem with Federal Reserve is what you know, Federal Reserve, your neighbor wants to be a good guy. He actually, I want to have a soft landing. You know, I I know market is too hot lady. I I slowly, slowly like Take off, pull off by the money. I, like next time you say you don't want to borrow money, cannot, cannot. I still borrow you a bit. You want to be the good guy. Soft landing. Like slowly, slowly let you. Don't feel the pain so much. But logically thinking, la, this can happen or not. Very hard, you know. So the very hard one is like, it's like your kid. La, every time take money from you, la, you can slowly, slowly ask him don't take money or not. Cannot. Ma. No, it's no. <laughs> this is the only way to solve this, you know. So, Federal Reserve have no choice, must. So that's why quantitative tightening should be happen and the recession, the stock like going lower and lower, the bear, bear market must happen to low down the inflation. If this don't happen, uh, inflation will not go down. Uh. That's why this is quantitative tightening. Okay. So, so you see, so we are going from Stagflation to deflationary bust. This is, you see, uh, if we don't go through this, uh, the market will not, go, will not grow, you know. We have been 10 years of bull market already. Is this sustainable or not? Confirm no, la. Not, not, not sustainable. La. So that's why we must go through this, go down, then only we can go up. So market coming down is a confirmed thing. La. So the question, the question now is what to do. La. So you see, in this market, cash, gold, treasury, long-term treasury is the way to go. You see, in it, you know, in if we are in deflationary bus, uh, I can tell you all, for the next year, uh, all of you, your personal wealth, said to sorry to say, will decrease by ten to at least ten to twenty percent. Okay, but what to do, uh? And and why is this so? You see, in a Low inflation and slow, I, 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 it's not a slow growth environment. Okay, cash, your cash and bond uh, won't be like the inflation part that your, your value go, go, go low. Because inflation, your, your, money go, your, your money value go down. But in a deflationary bus market, uh, cash and bond value remain. Okay, but commodity and gold, no inflation. Business going low, that means demand going, demand is low. This commodity and gold value will go down. And equity is the part that hurt the most. You know why? GDP down. That means the company earning will be down. And 
Somewhere you see quantitative tightening. You know this PE ratio, ah? you know this price to earning ratio is how we evaluate like how much we should pay for one dollar of earning. If the market is full of cash, ah, the PE ratio will be high. But now, due to this quantitative tightening, the PE ratio will go, will, will, will come down. So you see, stock market will be the one that hurt the most. You see, the, when your, your earning go lower, and the PE ratio go lower. So that's why stock market will be going down. And because of people have no money, no credit, your neighbor got no money, that means you want to, you want to borrow money, also no people want to borrow you. So uh, the, the real estate transaction uh, will be going down, you know, like people suffering, business suffering. So that's why real estate will be going low. So you see, uh, for this situation, uh, one next to two years, it's, it's, it's real recession happening. So the personal wealth, we cannot escape from this lah, unless you sell everything and you put into cash up. But this is not logical, you know, this is not logical. <laughs> so that's why I'm from personal wealth, I'm a very logical guy. What I say must got something that what we can do, you know. Okay, so you see, the, the market will be very bad. So, and even cash and bond, like, you know, as a financial, British finance one, you know, we always say that Cash is trash. Who keep money in the bank is stupid one. But now, ah, no, no, no. And I, that, that situation changed, one, you know. <laughs> this is not true. <laughs> this is not true. This is true, but not always true. Lah. Okay, that's why. Like, com comparatively, ah, now you look at this. Ah, cash and bond ah, actually is a good, good investment asset to hold lah, for this the next one to two years. Okay, so you see, and to, to prove to you, uh, to prove to you, uh, stock market and all the market will go down, uh, is what you know. You see, uh, this is like, you see, a total asset. This is Federal Reserve total asset. It means your neighbor total asset. Uh, you see, uh, in 2018, uh, the Federal Reserve actually tried once, you know, for quantitative tightening. You see, in 2018, uh, you see the asset go lower down. What happened to the stock market? Hey, you see, uh, 2018 to 2019, it go down, you know. At hey, that time, ah, economy very good, you know. Economy, GDP is growing positively. It's doing very well. But, wow, hey, GDP very well. Ah. Quantitative tightening also go down. Ah. Now, ah, economy good or bad? Very bad, you know. So, let me ask you, the, the, the drawdown will be larger or smaller? Ah, you, you know, ah, you know yourself. Ah. Okay. <laughs> This is education to person only, ah. You say yourself, ah. I didn't say anything, ah. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. What have we learned so far? So, we learned about what is the best investment asset now. The best investment asset now is cash, uh, commodity now for short term, bond, gold, and what are the risks in the current market, which is uh, quantitative tightening. Of course, there's this uh, China, there's this uh, Ukraine and Russia war. You see, ah, this kind of thing, ah, there's risk, but... I always tell my wife, lah, for something that you cannot control, lah, don't go worry about that. Lah. <laughs> this is something. And for, for the Ukraine war, there's nothing that we can control about it. And China, lah, China, although they're in a hard situation, but their government is actually trying very hard, harder than you and me, lah, trying to fix that, you know. So let them do their part to worry. <laughs> we do our part, can't really, okay? So, okay, if like country tightening is happening, so what should we do? Okay, so conclusion, what should we do? So for long-term investor, uh, like, 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 yeah, like, like, yeah, like me, uh, just long-term investor, just keep cash or cash equivalent, bond, gold, this kind of thing, and go long when the economy start growing. So for me, what I'm looking at, I'm very, I'm going to sing a bear market for another one, one year plus, uh, one, one and a half year. So for me, it's a one, at least one and a half year, uh, for 2023 for me, it will be a very hard year. But when the market, we will start to go up, ah, then it's for me, we will start to buy, go, go in. Ah. So honestly, ah, what I will do now, ah, just between you and me, ah, just in this private session, ah, for me now, what I will do is, well, you know, refinance my house and keep cash. Hey, you see, ah, you see, ah? okay, this is, this is true, ah, you, know, you know why? Because now you know cash is king, ma. This is king, ma. although interest rate ah, is high, but Flexi loan on ma, the, the flexi, flexi interest on ma. Yeah la, one to two years high interest rate. <laughs> okay ma, 
hey, you know, we all cannot, you know, why, you, know you, you cannot wait until the market is coming up already. Go in to come out already. Huh? Then you go take, you go get money from, it's very hard, you know, you know how you come out with cash so in a sudden to, to, to cash in, you know, you know, you know, as a trader, you know, the market time, although I don't like market timing, but market timing is important. <laughs> okay, I don't time the market, but I know that period of time uh, is very important. So when that time is when time when that time come, uh, the question is, do you have the cash reserve to go in or not? And you know, just with that thing, uh, hey, 10 to 20 more percent of return easily, right? So that's why for me, I I will refinance my house and pay extra one to two percent interest per year. Lah. Okay. Then for short-term trader, if you want to trade with the trend, short equity, almost uh, but, uh, but uh, lower down your leverage, uh, lower down your leverage. Uh, okay, because mid short term wise, uh, when I say mid term is half year, uh, short, half year, uh, because short term wise, the volatility will be very really high. And long, I said long when the economy starts growing back. Okay, thank you. And last word, it's just market cycle, nothing personal. Uh. When next year, uh, if I prepare you all, uh, next year when market drop, uh, everything your wealth going down, uh, don't be worried, don't cannot sleep. Uh. Nothing personal, it's just market cycle. Okay, thank you everyone. That's all my presentation.